Good day, beautiful soul family, and welcome back to On Another Level. And today's reading is from Isaiah chapter 62. Um, and what I see here is talking about, well, that's what it says. It says Zion's restoration. And it's truly beautiful. Upon me reading it, um, it's about understanding the process. Understanding a great work that is being done. You see, in this world, you could, I don't know, write a book and somehow someone else will get their hands on it and they won't copy the same words but they will uh, take some excerpts from it and then claim it as theirs so that's um, what happens a lot these days when people um, are greedy for money greedy for the Vice Spirit is telling me, and I don't know why, because I just really wanted to um, read the scriptures. But the Vice Spirit is telling me that, you know, this, this world, there are people who do it for money. And there are people who do it for notoriety. And then there are people who will do it because they know that they know exactly what they're doing. You see, there's different levels. The money is what people see. Oh, wow, right? And then behind it is the notoriety. And then behind all of that, it's a deep-seated hate. Where the money and the notoriety doesn't, they don't really care about that. They care about how and why, you know, it's like, it's deep-seated. Okay? And the more that they shine, the less that you shine. Without realizing that, it's not about how people view. It's about what God sees. And all will be held accountable. It's, you know, I pick, I pick a book because a lot of people do that, sadly enough. Um, but it, it happens to to anyone when they are fulfilling their purpose. If a person would ignore their own purpose to pursue money, um, then a person can look at someone else's purpose and declare it to be their own for money, for fame. For simply just hatred, and you may you may wonder, you may wonder. But when you put that work within yourself, all right, and when you are fulfilling your purpose, keep on fulfilling your purpose. Keep on writing your books. Keep on painting your paintings. Keep on healing. Keep on teaching. Don't stop. Because you're not doing it. You're doing it for the people. But you are a servant. To the most high. And that's the difference. When you do things because of hatred. Or you do things because you want notoriety even money if that is the basis because you know seek righteousness and all things will be hap will, will be applied to you given to you right but if your foundation is based off of greed is based off of envy and um, anything that's lower based even lust okay you won't be fulfilled Nothing is hidden when it comes to divine spirit. 
you will be a slave. Whew. It's like you're putting yourself in enslavement. It's not so much about what other people do to you. It's about what you have chosen to do to yourself. When you live your life and you go within and you do that work and you, you're working on a relationship with Divine Spirit, They're going to do what they're going to do, but you are free. And it's that freedom of knowing that you are <clears throat> building that relationship with the Most High. It's a freedom of being in agreement with love, with peace, where things make sense, you know? It's like you, you're fulfilling your purpose <laughs> and the Most High is happy with what you're doing. And it's, that really is about choice. You can either continue to focus on the world and continue to produce and, and see how other people working behind the scenes because Divine Spirit will show you. But forgive and put it in Divine Spirit's hands because Divine Spirit sees all things. Matter of fact, there's a reason why Divine Spirit shows you. You're being shown because it's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to take this into your hands? Or are you going to give it to me? And when you forgive and you hand it over, Divine Spirit, thank you for showing me what is taking place. I forgive and I also trust you. Divine Spirit is telling me when things happen, when, when those haters do certain things to you and it is allowed, don't say, when you have a relationship with Divine Spirit, you say, you know what, Divine Spirit, this is, you've allowed this to take place. For a reason. I trust you. You place this into my hands. You see, there's two ways of looking at it. You look at it as, Divine Spirit, why did you do this? Why did you put this in my life? Or you can say, Divine Spirit, okay, you entrusted this to me as it is not over me, but I am over it. Now what do I do? I will forgive because this is the part that I play in this equation. I could either A, get upset and do the things that they do which brings out an outcome that is not good for me especially. Or being, I can see it from a different perspective. The Vice Spirit, I know, this is why it's so important to go within with self-love, self-care, self-nurture, because you, and build your relationship with Divine Spirit, because you can come from a knowing. Divine Spirit, I know that you love me. I don't want to cry. And I know that you provide and protect me. So I know that this is not just happening in my life, but you entrusting this into my hands. Because no lower base toxicity is, a, is above me. It is, however, below me. So now that it's in my hands, what will I do? How will I use my power? 
because there's you're you're shown a lot of things but are you going to do the same things that they do see in the same like manner they may <clears throat> do readings on you they may investigate stalk you or do all these different things that's likened to having something in their hands and they are applying their power but in a lower base way and so as it's in your hands as it's in your life you have a choice are you going to do what they do or are you going to bring forth the contrast see there's a contrast regardless there's the good and the bad right so what are you going to do when you trust divine spirit you say divine spirit I trust you and you have entrusted this into my hands it's like you're working in the office and you're an administrator worker right and before it goes back up okay before it goes back up to the and divine spirit is showing me this so let's see how can I explain it okay so as you're working in an office <clears throat> the CEO lands a deal okay lands a project now there was a meeting land the project now there's different teams different departments I have to make sure I'm still recording <laughs> there's different teams in the department in, in their business it's got to go through the administrative crew it's got to go through the uh, accounting crew it's got to go through so many different departments and they look over what needs to be done because it has to be it has to be written down okay now the project between the two CEOs was agreed upon okay so it was agreed let's just say it was agreed upon in the um, the upper rank of the business the CEO but for us we need to go ahead and um, draw up the paperwork all right <laughs> so in the paperwork contract right so in the contract it's this is that and then they have different meanings for certain phrases da, 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 da. right so but each department has to sign off on it it doesn't just happen it's all about agreement and so as the contract goes to each department and they do their part it is signed that's the accountability and you're given the approval but where does this paper go when it is complete where does this contract go when it's complete the contract goes back to the where the CEO and if anyone in the department was not in agreement then they would not sign so then they have to say okay why did this why did this department not sign everyone is in agreement so when you have that contract in your hands and you have that project in your hands and you sign it it goes back to the CEO if you're not if you haven't signed it then it stays in your hands but upon you signing it and sending it back up to the CEO then the CEO takes care of the rest hopefully I'm expressing it you see nothing happens nothing is hidden what I'm trying to say is nothing is hidden when it comes to divine spirit and when something is allowed is because there is an agreement that is going to bring forth um, a better something better something good it's an ingredient but you have to look at it from a different perspective instead instead of being feeling like a victim see whenever you're reading the word you're empowered whenever I go into prayer I'm empowered Whenever I'm fulfilling my purpose, I am empowered. Because your purpose is, it fits you. Your purpose is, is there in the palms of your hands. 
your purpose is for you to work on it, for you to, to uh, utilize it in your life. Your purpose has your DNA and your, your whole makeup. That's your purpose. Your purpose fits you like a glove. Comfortably. That is your purpose. It's yours. And when you go upon your purpose... And you say, okay, this is happening because this is going to strengthen me. This is happening because no matter what, whether there's no notoriety, no this, no that, it still is part of the world. My purpose is not of the world. So even when I have no notoriety, even when... Da, da, da. I don't know. You fill in the blank. Understand that Divine Spirit is entrusting this into your hands. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to not be in an agreement? When you go according to your purpose, Divine Spirit rewards you. But what's also the extra is that you build even more trust in Divine Spirit. And you realize, okay, this is the difference between the world and the Kingdom of Divine Spirit. I can work on my purpose and know that when uh, things happen I can sign off on it and give it to Divine Spirit. I can trust that I have freedom to fulfill my purpose. Okay? So, what I want to read, this is uh, called Zion's Restoration. Okay, here it says, Isaiah chapter 62. I will not keep silent because of Zion, and I will not keep still because of Jerusalem, until her righteousness shines like a bright light, and her salvation like a flaming torch. Nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be given a new name that the Lord's mouth will announce. You will be glorious. You will be a glorious crown in the Lord's hand, and a royal diadem in the palm of your God's hand. You will no longer be called deserted, and your land will not be called desolate. Instead, you will be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land will be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you. And as a groom rejoices over his bride, so your God will rejoice over you. Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen on your walls. They will never be silent day or night. There is no rest for you who remind the Lord. Do not give him rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn with his, with his right hand and his strong arm. I will no longer give your grain to your enemies for food, and foreigners will not drink the new wine for which you have labored. For those who gather grain will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who harvest the grapes will drink the wine in my holy courts. Go out, go out through the city gates. Prepare a way for the people. Build it up. Build up the highway. Clear away the stones. Raise a banner for the peoples. Look, the Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, Look, your salvation is coming. His wages are with him, and his reward accompanies him. And they will be called the holy people, the Lord's redeemed. And you will be called, cared for, a city not deserted and this is so beautiful it's called restoration Zion's 
restoration. And you may say to yourself, you know what, Divine Spirit, you know, um, why do you allow it? See, this is when you're looking at it from a victimized person um, perspective, okay? And you may say, why did you allow this to take place? And why did you allow that to take place? <clears throat> Because restoration is about something being taken away. Okay? Whether it's your ideas. Whether it's your energy. But when you put it in Divine Spirit's hands. Back in His hands. And you trust. Divine Spirit, I know you allowed it for a reason. You didn't start it. But you allowed it to take place. Because what comes after is balance. You see, in the beginning, Divine Spirit didn't just create the day. He created night and day. He created balance. And nowadays we look at the night time as a bad thing or, you know, but it's only because of the wicked. What I'm trying to say is that with Divine Spirit, there's balance. And when we build our relationship with Divine Spirit, we can trust His judgment. You know, what's so interesting is that a lot of people, you know, they want to go to heaven, right? <clears throat> But in the earth, they don't trust Divine Spirit's decisions, judgments, really decisions. And the thing about it is, is if you can't trust, it's, it's like this is... um. A place where, yes, there are some dark situations, okay? But there's balance because Divine Spirit sees everything. And so, this world has contrast, okay? Um, this world is not just bad. There's also great things happening in this world, okay? Um... This is the place where we see the materializations of certain things. So when you see that people come against you, come take your energy, take your ideas, you know, not only that, it, there's many a levels to it. This is also where you can see that you can trust Divine Spirit. The Divine Spirit is telling me that there is justice. And when there is an injustice and imbalance, goodness comes in, light comes in, and brings it back to balance. And that's the restoration. So when we trust the Divine Spirit, it's like, you know, it's like, when you have your power, what do you do with it? What are you creating? Are you creating mischief? Or are you creating peace? Are you creating love? Are you creating hate? And so in a way, where it's like we're being tested. Okay, you have the power. What are you going to do? Are you going to do the same things as they are going to do? Are you going to utilize your power and your wisdom and um, bring forth balance? Are you going to sign off on it in agreement and then give it back up to Divine Spirit? And trust that Divine Spirit, who is all-knowing, the Creator? Are you going to trust Divine Spirit is what I'm saying. 
Divine Spirit is telling me, I gave you your blessings. But do you love me enough to trust me that when someone comes in and takes it away, are you going to continue to love me? You know, it's like this. It's really interesting. So we get our blessings from the Divine Spirit. Okay? And there are, of course, wayward people who will take. They will do anything to take it. Like into the, the analogy of uh, a table full of children. And um, one child is looking at the other child. Okay? And takes their takes their toy because they don't like the fact that they're enjoying their toy. Okay? And so the Vice Spirit says, okay, look. This is allowed to happen for many reasons. But I want to know what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in trust and in love with me and knowing that I have the power to restore? Or are you yourself going to turn against me? You see, because the people who take your whatever, they, they don't have a relationship with Divine Spirit. But when you go within with self-love, self-care, self-nurture, and you're building your relationship with Divine Spirit, it's, your love should not be based on what you can get. You see, that's, that's not a good relationship. I love you as long as I can get something for you. I love you as long as um, I get something in the end. Something that I can feel, something that I can touch, something that I can pick up. If it's not anything, because some things, the blessing is the wisdom. Not all things are tangible. Sometimes when we go through situations and something is taken, the lesson is there. And you glean that wisdom. And that wisdom is not tangible. But it is the reward. Okay, so this took place. I'm understanding more about Divine Spirit. I'm building my relationship with Divine Spirit where I can trust that when my energy is taken away, when there are blockages, I can trust that Divine Spirit sees this. And because Divine Spirit sees this, I must see how Divine Spirit sees. And I sign off on it. I forgive. I put it in Divine Spirit's hands. And I release. I release because I realize that Divine Spirit has got my back. Is my love only generated because I get something that I can touch, that I can hold on to? Is this the type of relationship that I have? Or is this a relationship where I trust? Divine Spirit, I trust that you entrusted this into my life. What am I going to do? Am I going to utilize the energy of the world? Or am I going to utilize the energy of your kingdom? What am I going to do? Have I, how have I grown? And this is where you choose your battles. When you sign off, you forgive, that's you signing off on it. That's you utilizing your power to bring about unconditional love. So you don't just, it's, it's, not, it's not a mask. Okay? It, you, your purpose is, is... Is yours. I know I'm not saying it right, but forgiveness is also going according with your purpose. 
when you are able to forgive, you're seen from a higher perspective. You say, you know what, Divine Spirit, you entrusted this into my hands. I sign off on it and I give it back to you. I know that you see more things than what I can see. And the mere fact of it taking place in my life lets me know that restoration is coming. But instead of this happening to me, it's happening for me. It's a different perspective. As you see certain things in the midst of happening in your life, choose to forgive and hand it on over to Divine Spirit. And this is how you can ascend. You're in agreement. Now you may say, why would I be in agreement? You're not in agreement to the wickedness that has taken place. You're in agreement to the restoration that is soon to come. And you can be in agreement because you know the Divine Spirit loves you. And so hopefully I am able to express what it is the Divine Spirit is showing me. But continue, no matter what, don't stop. Your purpose is yours. It's like, it's like a jacket. You put on your jacket, it feels good, it makes you feel, feel nice, right? And someone takes that jacket. Forgive. Send it up to Divine Spirit. You're in agreement. Ah, yes, I love that jacket, but Divine Spirit, I know that there's a lesson in this. Not only for you, however, it's also a lesson to the person that took the jacket. See, because they, they have power as well. They have purpose as well. But like that child, that he had a toy, but he decided to look at the other person and their toy. He wasn't happy with his toy, but he became even more happier when he was able to take the other child's toy and even push the child down. It's about that energy. And so what you do is you utilize knowing Divine Spirit, you gave me that jacket. Someone else took that jacket. But Divine Spirit, I know that you love me. And my love is deep-rooted in more than what I can receive. My love is for you, Divine Spirit, goes far deeper than the material things gained and lost. I trust in you, Divine Spirit. Open my eyes to the lesson. It's like there's peace, there's healing, there's love, right? And these are the fruits of the Spirit. But there are many things, many pressures that comes on the, the harvest, okay? As they're growing, this is what you're pulling from. Okay, so the soil is about hatred where there's hate there's what there's love okay so where there's um where there's sickness there's healing okay there's the contrast and what i'm trying to say is even though in your life you will have people that take or cause mischief or cause blockings or cause so many different things understand that the divine spirit sees this as well Stay focused on Divine Spirit, not focus on the world. Do you see what I'm saying? Because Divine Spirit brings forth restoration. When you use your power to sign off on it by forgiving and giving it back to Divine Spirit, you're placing your trust. You're saying, Divine Spirit, I know 
You created night and day. You create balance. And I trust that this is a time where I can see you work. I can see you restore. Where if someone takes away, I can see that you bring forth balance. And this is where you trust. Divine Spirit, I trust you. Now, sometimes it could be a day. Sometimes it could be a week. Sometimes it could be a month. Sometimes it could be years. But you must understand that Divine Spirit is exact. Things happen for a reason. Things happen for a reason. And if anything, don't question Divine Spirit in that way. If anything, say, Divine Spirit, okay, so this is allowed to take place. Tell me what is my role in this as my higher self. Tell me the wisdom that I'm meant to glean from this situation. Look at it from an empowered point of view. Okay? Now, I don't want to ramble. It's just, and it's probably too late, but the thing about it, this beautiful soul family, is that When you build your relationship, let it not be built based on what you can get materially. You know, don't just do something so that you can get money. Because there are better rewards than money. Broaden your consciousness. It's like, okay, so you raise your consciousness, but you also have to broaden your consciousness. Because there's restoration. And in, in that way, again, there's that developing. The, the fine spirit, as something is taken away, this actually helps me to trust you even the more. It helps me to grow. It helps me to see you at work in my life. I trust you. And I love you, Divine Spirit. That I know when things take place, there's an overall reason to it. And as we're building this, this is, this is you knowing, it's having practice in, like I said, there are people who are, well, when I get to heaven, everything will be great and I can trust. But you have to understand that as you're in this world, it's likened when you focus on Divine Spirit and you build your relationship with Divine Spirit, you're, you're doing all of this now. You don't have to wait to go somewhere to then start being. You can do all of this now. And I think that's sometimes, in some people, not all people, but I think that's a mist. That you need to go to heaven to have a relationship with Divine Spirit. Divine Spirit is telling me that when situations happen in your life, and I know I've just said it, but I need to reiterate it, reiterate it, that this is how you see Divine Spirit work. This is, it's like being able to see with spiritual eyes. The wicked, they, 
they do things and then they watch, but that's on a physical plane. As you are raising your consciousness and broadening it, you are able to see divine spirit at work. And when you're able to see with those eyes, it builds your trust in divine spirit. It's like, how can you get into a relationship when there is no trust? So, this is all that I have, beautiful soul family. Those who continue to have faith and trust and love and divine spirit, unconditional love, there is restoration. Okay? Have a beautiful and wonderful day. Namaste.